Whiskey is defined as a spirit made from malted grain, but we know it's so much more than that. Whiskey is passion. It's our history and it's our community. Join us as we explore what it means to be a part of the whiskey culture. Hey guys, we're here at the Fraser Museum in Louisville, Kentucky. It's the official start of the Bourbon Trail. Great place to learn more about bourbon and Kentucky's history. Thank you guys for joining us. Let's get started. From the second you enter the wooden Arcadia of the Fraser Museum, you understand just how much bourbon has impacted Kentucky's history. From the whiskey barrels cartoonishly adorning the ceiling, to the giant bourbon trail map, to the main room packed wall to wall with Kentucky pop culture memorabilia, the Fraser Museum seems to have it all. Enter Stephen Yates, longtime museum curator, manager, and our guide to this monument to whiskey history. We learned the Fraser Museum is the official start of the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, making it an ideal stop for those making their Kentucky pilgrimage for the first time. So if somebody wants to come here, they don't know where they want to start. They don't know the first thing about the Bourbon Trail, where to go. They have a couple hundred dollars in their pocket. They're like, love bourbon, want a great time. They can come here and figure that out, right? Correct. Um, our people, our guest services staff act as a full concierge service and they can find out do they have transportation because if they do, then they can work in some of the distilleries that are out of the city. If they're staying in a downtown hotel and they don't and it's non-COVID and we have six places around within walking distance, then they can find out maybe that's more their, their speed or how they want to go. So yes, it is a great resource and then when they come, we let them know about the Spirit Kentucky Bourbon exhibit and how they can get a great background for the industry before they delve out and get the individual stories of each distillery that they're going to visit. The still room houses a collection of antique bourbon. From bottles of Old Weller to obscure brands we'd never heard of unable to survive the culling of the American Prohibition, it's a collection unlike anything we'd ever seen. Luckily, Stephen was there to walk us through. If you will follow me, um, this is our Brown Foreman uh, section here that is all pre-metric. Um, you've got half gallons, you've got other half pints and pints, and also a very interesting piece called the Sputnik that looks like a lava lamp that came out during the space race with the Russians. Very cool piece. Also, if you look at this board back there with a the young Larry Hagman, who played J.R. Ewing, but also before that played Major Nelson on a show called I Dream a Genie, Barbara Eden's genie bottle was in, was in actuality a Jim Beam decanter that is on display at Jim Beam in Claremont, Kentucky, and a very cool place, to, a thing to hit up on the bourbon trail. If you come over this way, this is some um, Prohibition era bottles that actually have prescriptions on them. Brown Foreman was one of six companies during Prohibition that was allowed to make whiskey legally for medicinal purposes. You can also rent rooms at the Fraser Museum to elevate your next whiskey event. The Order of the Writ Room is named after an international whiskey society founded by the Kentucky Distillers Association. The Order of the Writ highlights and honors those who have demonstrated outstanding achievement and commitment to the whiskey community. Beautifully designed, full of natural light, and packed with lush lounges. A dram in the order of the writ room should be on everyone's bucket list. The bottle hall at the Fraser Museum is absolutely awe-inspiring. Covered from wall to wall in bottles of different shapes, sizes, colors, and rarities, you can't help but be impressed. But the bottle room held one more secret we had yet to uncover. I'm gonna show you something a little special we have here. In the midst of this bottle hall, we're going to go into our speakeasy and we're going to show you where we do tastings and a little prohibition exhibit too. We have Al Capone holding court in the corner and a, a little barn here, a stage, speakeasy music, um, some things that talk about Al Capone and George Remus, really cool characters from the prohibition era. Uh, you know, George Remus was a, uh, he was a bootlegger who was also an attorney by trade. And when his bookkeeper, when he got arrested for bootlegging, his bootleg, his uh, bookkeeper took up with his wife. And when he came out, he shot and killed them both. 
and he was the first person in Kentucky to use the temporary insanity defense, and he won. And at his peak, he did not drink, but he employed 3,000 people during Prohibition. Uh, he was from Cincinnati, and I always find that interesting that he did not drink, but he made plenty of money um, during Prohibition. So we tell that story. Him and George Remus and Al Capone hung out at the Rathskeller at the Seelbach where they gave a little input to a gentleman named F. F. Scott Fitzgerald on the inspiration to write The Great Gatsby, which is all great bourbon lore and prohibition lore. So these are the kind of things that you will find here at the Fraser that tie into bourbon. And it's the stories that make everything so cool. Stephen was even kind enough to pop the top and share a dram of his favorite single barrel whiskey, Rebel Yell 10. Gentlemen, what we are going to try here is some 10 year old Rebel Yell um, American Whiskey Magazine just recently rated it as the best single barrel in Kentucky. So I think it's a good thing to taste. And we're gonna go through the process that I typically do with groups that come through. We're gonna look at the color. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the color comes from how long it's in the barrel based on those caramelized sugars that come out. Because when bourbon comes off the still, it looks white. It looks like gin or vodka. What gives it its color are those caramelized sugars that Mother Nature pulls out of it by the changing of the seasons. And as, it goes, as the seasons change, those barrels expand and contract and they pull those sugars out. And it changes that white liquid into the darker, to the brownish color you see, depending on how long it's there. And then also there are other factors like evaporation. You know, think about your house. Your attic is a lot hotter than the basement, so the, the barrels in the top are gonna lose more of, of water to evaporation, so it's gonna be um, less liquid, but it's gonna be higher proof. The ones on the bottom is gonna be the opposite. You're gonna have, you're not gonna lose as much, but you're also gonna have a lower proof. So they, the, the, the companies that want to adjust and have something that is really um, stable in the same way all the time, they will adjust with water. Well, it's really crazy. When you go to these distilleries, you can have some, some very different expressions and some mm -hmm. completely different, I mean, even product lines just based on where they're put in the warehouse. I mean, you'll have some stuff that's, yep. uh, you know, you'll have their base level whiskey in one part of the warehouse and you'll have one of their super premium expressions just on, on a certain area of the warehouse just because of the temperature difference. And some places rotate, some places do not. That's a business decision, you know, that they want to do. Um, most of the master distillers that I've talked to told me that they're really, really good bottles are somewhere in that middle. Yeah. That's considered the sweet spot. Um, it's so funny because so many of these guys now and gals that are master distillers have a chemistry background. So all the products are sound from a, you know, from a, how they make it, but then it's how they age it, how they promote it, and just everybody's individual palate or, or taste buds. Yeah. You know, because it's, there's no such thing as a bad bourbon. It's just which one do you like the best right then? We thoroughly enjoyed our time at the Fraser Museum and our time with Stephen Yates. He's a boundless wealth of whiskey knowledge. We felt like we left the Fraser Museum with a better understanding of how whiskey intertwines with the history, present, and future of Kentucky. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming on this tour with us. Thank you for having us. If you are in Louisville, you love bourbon, or just want to know more about the history of Kentucky, this is a great place to start. Just like our tagline says, it all starts here, whether it's Kentucky history or bourbon. When you're planning your trip, start it here and you will not be disappointed. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for spending time with us down here at the Rick House, brought to you by Whiskey Culture. This show wouldn't be possible without your dedication to the whiskey community and continued support. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to learn more about the world of whiskey.